Mark, uh, Isaiah Hartenstein was just telling us about, you know, he'd heard great things about the organization, but um, he's experiencing it day to day now of just how the players are treated, how their families are treated, and that goes, you know, from physical therapists to coaches to staff to, you know, everybody in the building. And I just wonder, maybe the level of pride that you feel hearing that, and um, maybe also, like, what it means to have a player recognize that type of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, I've said this before, but they walk in the building and, you know, they're going to see hugs and they're going to see Ayana and the chefs and operations people, PR, physical therapists, strength people before they even come to the court. And there's a lot going on in the life of an NBA player. And in the season, there's a lot of emotions. Uh, and so it's almost like a gauntlet of consistency and positivity that they go through before they get to the floor every day. And I think uh, it really puts them and us in a position of strength when it comes to consistency on the court, when you have that kind of consistency off of it. So um, glad he recognizes it. You know, we're not perfect, but we're certainly trying to make sure that that's tight and, you know, Sam and everybody else have done a great job. And then I want to ask you about Lou. Um, he's played a lot of different roles offensively for you all over the course of time. And we talked last year about him tightening his game, but are there are there times where you know all those experiences that he had maybe with more offensive loads can be you know, prove really valuable for him over the course of an eighty two game season? I think so. I mean he's he's you know, when you watch him in college he was like a driving scorer. I mean he's he's an offensive player uh, by nature to a degree that also happens to be a very high level defender. So um, he's always kind of had that makeup, um, and he's you know had a lot of experience, obviously, and has learned uh, where to settle his game in to have you know an additive game that's efficient and impactful, just like every other player. Um, but I think yeah, any experience any of these guys have helps. Mark, uh, obviously, yesterday we were talking about you know the efficiency telling you what a guy can handle. Isaiah was just saying it. I know you've been encouraging him to shoot threes. Just when you look at his past work, just what are you seeing that you know, encourages you to think that he can be uh, you know, a decent number for uh, Well, I mean, he's shot him before in the course of his career, um, and it's something he's worked on and is confident in, and uh, when that's the case, I usually let the player take the lead on that, um, especially when it's a new player, and then react from there, you know, and, and you know, let it settle in from there. The best example of that is Jay Willie, you know, he didn't shoot a lot of threes in college, and his rookie year in training camp, um, he was just kind of bombing them up and was making enough of them, but it was his confidence in, in the shot and in himself that, you know, we kind of took the cues from, and, you know, had we not done that, we probably would have told him, hey, let's lay off of those, and we wouldn't have a, you know, 35 to 40 percent three-point shooter in him at this point, so uh, we try to be open and then let the the body of work tell us where to go from there. Uh, and we tend to, to find some stuff by doing that, and we'll do that with you know Isaiah and Caruso and the rookies. Where does that philosophy come from? You, you talked about training camp this year, at least. Uh, you talked about like having a hands-off approach to, and just letting them correct everything. Like, where does that come from? You're still a young know, coach. Um, I, I mean, just understanding that you don't really know. You know, I think it's, it's just – having the awareness that you know you're you're making educated guesses you know so if I were to make a judgment of you know what a new player is going to look like here it's it's merely an educated guess uh, and I don't really know but you if you allow things to unfold um, you'll you'll know a little more the body of work will start to, to show you you know what the weaknesses or strengths of the team are or what you know, kind of game the player needs to play, and you could be more sure when it's time to be like, "Hey, you know, this is what we got to do." Were you like that when you first took the job? Um, I don't know. I, I think by the time I was, um, I was here with the Thunder, yeah. But I mean, early on, probably not. You know, you the longer you coach, the the less you think you know. Not the other way around, because the game is very humbling. You know, you're you're wrong a lot, so. You know, the more you coach, the more wrong you end up being, and the more you realize that you're wrong, and then you, you just don't coach anymore and let the players make all the decisions. You had mentioned yesterday about just how extroverted uh, Caruso is out there on the floor. Other guys have mentioned just how vocal he is. What, what stood out to you in terms of how he's used his voice so early on here? He's very assertive, uh, and he's very confident in it, and I think his confidence comes from um, – his, his intentions as a player. He knows he's about the team, and he knows he's about 
team success and he's always in character on that and therefore he's willing to pipe up and, and speak his mind and he's always been like that you know that's not just because he's a veteran player now I can speak to that you know he was he was like that from from day one um, and I think the confidence comes from like I said he's he's the most purely intention guy you can imagine you know he only cares about the team he only cares about team success uh, and therefore when he says hey you know let's do this mm -hmm. he knows the guys are going to take that in a way that's non-threatening whereas if a guy had more of an agenda um, they may be less confident to say it or the guys may not respond the way they do to him he was top five defense last year adding Alex a good defender never assume that you're just going to be automatically good but if you are what does that look like well, I mean, defense is so much about competitiveness and effort and uh, connectedness that, um, and those things are really hard in an NBA season. You know, there's a lot of things pulling against that. The length of the season, the travel, the pace of the schedule, all that stuff blunts your competitiveness, it blunts your connectivity. And so you have to be that much more intentional about it and your players have to be that much more committed to it. Uh, and we were, last season we have been for multiple years but that is not guaranteed at all um, and that's the mentality that we have to take to this is understanding that you know in the NBA uh, you only get what you earn and if we want to be a really good defense we have to earn that just like anything else that we get. What stood out the most about Dylan Jones so far and kind of how has he been used early on? Um, all those guys, everybody that's new, whether it's Alex and Isaiah or the rookies have done a great job you know Dylan, AJ, um, Dukas has done a really, really good job. Topic is, is doing his thing right now. They've all, you know, attacked the program, you know, done the right stuff. So they're off to a great start. And in terms of how they've been used, you know, kind of to my point with Daniel's question, we don't really, like, assert that too much. You know, like, it's really just system fundamentals right now. There's, there's so much that you can do fundamentally that that can fill your plate for a long time, you know. And as they're acclimating to that and as they're emphasizing that they'll start to show flickers of what they're capable of and what where they might be stalling and that's when the developmental track starts but it doesn't start on day zero because you don't really know exactly what um, you're working with they don't really know you know what they're doing well or struggling with and we try to let that stuff emerge from the experience rather than you know be judgmental or proactive with it obviously we see you know Nicola working with Chip behind us, just uh, what is his recovery looking like? Where is that at? And, and just what are you hoping he gets out of this time period? Um, he's on track. I don't know exactly where he is, um, you know, in terms of what he's doing yet. But he's worked really hard. I mean, he's been here for a while and is, um, is finally to the point where he's on the court a little bit. Um, but has been very engaged and has taken a very consistent, you know, workmanlike attitude to it. Those are hard rehabs, and that's a long time you know from surgery to to being on the court playing you know he's obviously got a ways to go and so there's a lot of dark days with that I, there's you know a lot of days that are mundane and you gotta you know really commit to a process that doesn't give you immediate return he's done a great job of that for young guys one of the things that's impressive about him is his maturity and that's on display with how he's attacking uh, his rehab process is the plan for him to work with chip mostly this year uh, it's a village with guys like that, you know, so it's, you know, he's got a strength coach that is primarily handling his caseload. Uh, Chip will touch him. Connor Johnson spending a ton of time with him. Daniel Dixon will spend a lot of time with him. We'll rotate him through the assistant coaches. We did that with Chet, you know, he'll watch film with a different assistant coach every whatever, you know, two weeks or 10 days or something just to build, you know, holistic relationships. We try not to be a program that's like, individual player individual person you know we do it, it's hard you know you you want to be a connected team and then you set it up like that and everybody's got their own like independent you know contractor we try to you know flatten that out and we're definitely doing that with the year with him you mentioned the dark days uh, recovery from an injury and the mental aspect is the part that gets lost in that do you guys try and like aid uh, a guy through that process a lot of it's just you know some of the stuff we've already touched on the stuff i was just saying uh, Mente, and then the stuff Nick was talking about with Hardenstein is like you want the building to be a place where they come in and they're energized by being here because of the people they're around and the fact that they have a clear plan they know what's going on people are committed to that you know, we, we want to care as much about his recovery as he does 
Um, and even then, he's still going to have plenty of days that he's like, man, I wish I was playing. But, you know, we try to do the best we can on our end of things. Um, and then if the player does the best they can, then, you know, he'll work through it and he'll be back on the court. There's some talk about him. He's talking on defense in the back end. I know he's not a, a rookie, but still it's a new system, I would think, from what he played in New York and his other spots. Is that usual or unusual for a guy to be able to communicate that way the first couple of days of camp? Parkinson, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he knows the pictures. He's a very um, intelligent player. The NBA is a pattern league, you know, like you're seeing the same stuff over and over again. You know, the best teams play pretty much the same way. The best players kind of have their their fastball that they throw. And so you can learn the league, and he's learned the league. You know, he's been around. You can tell. Um, and he takes the preparation seriously. So he's got a lot of, like, NBA institutional knowledge, and now it's a matter of him learning the Thunder institutional knowledge, which is going to be a little bit of a curve. But he's, you know, he's he's on it. It's uh, It's been out there that the Lakers hired Vanessa Brooks. I just wanted you to speak to what uh, losing her on the staff means. Um, well, there's a gap in between when she left here and when they hired her. It wasn't a direct uh, line, but she's a wonderful person. She did great work here, very empathic, um, very organized. I think, you know, similar to, you know, there's a lot of uh, organizational talk today, but, you know, she's a person that, kind person, empathy, uh, competent, prepared, you know, so when people come in the building, you know, and they're working with her, they're getting that every single day. And, you know, that stacks up, you know, when it's her or when it's, like I said, anybody in the building, you know, when you can surround the players with that, it puts them in a position of strength and it puts everybody else in a position of strength to work with them. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Coach. See you.